Good morning, Singapore. This is The Morning Show with Kelly and Barbara. We hope you've had a great weekend living Kavita Loka and we're here to gear you up for the week ahead with our Mindful Mondays where we've got all the bits to keep your sanity in check and prepare you for the future. And clearly, some terrible puns to start. We'll be giving You're you all welcome. the updates you need to know, making sure that you get a good stretch in and also answering some serious FAQs regarding masks, not to mention epic giveaways coming your way. Now, earlier on today, we had your Pilates and Core Blast, so keep that up, and I'm sure we will be seeing the six-pack you've always wanted, or I want. <laughs> That's right. And we've also got our resident hunks, Yao Xiang and Kenneth, taking you through your bodyweight workout at 3 p.m. Ladies, don't worry. I am working on convincing them to do it shirtless. I got you. Don't mm, worry. But before we get to that, let's take a look at the numbers. So, 596 new cases in Singapore, which brings our total to 6,588 with five new COVID clusters, but 25 Singaporeans or permanent residents. So that are the, those are the numbers, but the most pressing issue of this weekend was clearly McDonald's closing down. Oh my God. After several cases within McDonald's, it was mandated that they should close their stores. Initially, it was just no takeaways. Sorry, and no, then no eat-ins. No, like, no oh. eat-ins, but then no takeaways, and then now no deliveries, no nothing. So no take-ins happened right after we'd gone to get our McDonald's on Friday afternoon. My husband, no clearly regrets. the number one fan of McDonald's, was absolutely gutted. Um, McDonald's saying, don't worry, we will be back, but... But seriously, those people who are making full advantage or taking full advantage of the big fans, yeah. the scalpers, suddenly it, think it's okay to be charging $50 for a McGriddle stack. On carousel. That is just, that's gross. That's disgusting. It's going to be disgusting and rank by the time it gets to you. Don't do it, guys. I think there's still a filio fish from Friday available for $7 on Carousel as well. If you're that desperate... Oh, the desperate, price is going down, clearly. <laughs> if you're that desperate, though, let me know. I'll cook it for you and I'll deliver it to you. All you've got to do is just pay the delivery fee. <laughs> right. <laughs> we all got to hustle in this day and age now. Um, so we've prepped you for this next part for the whole of last week, and it's finally here. So each day we've got something absolutely awesome just for you. It's called Sport the Difference. What exactly do we have to give away, though? We have two vouchers, uh, two $50 vouchers from mm -hmm. the masses. Now, if you follow us on socials, you'll know that we absolutely love this place. Amazing, fine cuisine for the masses. A little bit of French flair with an Asian twist, and you are guaranteed to be treating yourself to an incredible meal. Plus, they're now doing island-wide delivery as well. That's right, it's really going to tickle your taste buds. So fastest fingers first, you want to take a screenshot so that you can circle all your differences. We, the picture is up now. That's right, we've got our SEA Games gold medalist, Yong Yi Xiang in Wushu in the Philippines 2019 SEA Games. That's there right. There are five differences here. So all you need to do is um, share on our Facebook with us, so comment on the video. Um, what are the five differences? If you want, you can post up a picture. So make sure you comment on the video. But we also need you to share the video onto your Facebook as well. So two things. Comment with the answers, reshare the video as well. And we're going to be picking two winners. So you also want to make sure that your Facebook profile is public so that we can see the share. That's right. And uh, good luck to each and every single one of you. I think I found four out of five differences. This is not an easy challenge. Every, everyone was playing this this morning and uh, no one could find the fifth one. But if you can, well done. So we're going to go for a quick break. But when we come back, we've got Lean Machine, Wani Miss Ban guiding us through how to use a foam roller mm -hmm. and how to sub it out if you don't have one at home. And later on, we're going to be joined by Terence Lowe from Novena Global schooling us on which mask is Best. Don't go anywhere.
Welcome back to The Morning Show. Barbara has tapped out for a bit and in her place, Pilates instructor extraordinaire, Wani Mizban. Wani, thank you so much for joining us. Hello, good morning. Great to have you to kick start us off on a Monday. Uh, now, you have been doing Pilates for a very long time. How yes. long now? Uh, 10, coming into 11 years. Oh, you don't no. look a day older oh. than 20. Look at you go. <laughs> um, so, how are you coping with circuit breaker? Obviously, as a fitness instructor, Pilates instructor, things must be a little bit tough. Yeah, um, just not teaching live is actually, as in live. Live. Yes, <laughs> it's uh, definitely a trigger for me. Um, I love teaching uh, my clients. I like to poke and prod and we want to see 360. Um, so I have te taught live virtual classes. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a bit tricky, but as long as everybody keeps moving, uh, we keep healthy. I think that's that's a good deal. Now you're also a Nike Master Trainer, aren't you? Yes, that's I am. a that's a pretty impressive title to have. Master <laughs> Trainer sounds very fancy. Tell me about that. Uh, so as a Master Trainer, I actually train the trainers. That's the main goal, uh, and that's for the region of uh, Southeast Asia and India. Uh, so we've been doing um, sessions, Nike community workouts on Wednes uh, well for me on Wednesdays. Uh, but globally, we've been doing that and serving everybody uh, some dishing out some workouts at home. Basically. Yeah. So giving giving back to the community at large. Okay, so today you're going to be giving us some tips on how we can ease some of our aches and pains, but this yes. time using a foam roller. Yeah. Okay, so why? what is a foam roller and why is it good? Okay, so foam rollers are basically things that look like this. They look scary, but they're hollow. So they're actually... Well, I would say sometimes they give you pain, but they release pain off you most of the time. That's um, probably quite accurate. Yeah, uh, but there are some people who actually do not have, may not have foam rollers, mm -hmm. and we've come up with um, things that you can actually use uh, in order to give you release. Uh, what it does is actually to release the myofascia. Uh, fascia, it basically, myo means muscle. Mm -hmm. uh, fascia is like a t tissue yep. that's all, all across the body, basically. It's technically that white layer that yes. we get when you when you cut peel open, off the chicken yeah, from the peel off yeah. everything, yeah. right? It would be that white <laughs> layer. Um, so. If I understand correctly, that's that's sort of like the layer, and if we don't release it, it hardens up. Correct. Okay. Yes. So what you want to do is, you know, when you get massage, yes, uh, and you feel relieved, mm -hmm. it's actually by also uh, moving and releasing the fascia. So okay. uh, fascia is actually released through movement, basically. Okay. So, so you um, need to stay moving, guys. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> so foam rolling actually um, works a lot, basically, okay. and they're different shapes and sizes. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a short one from. Uh, TPR trigger uh, point therapy. Yep. Um, and you can use different different types basically. So uh, we're gonna. Use, I'm gonna show you also some with a bottle. Okay. Um, so just in case you don't have a foam roller at home, you can yes. also use a bottle like this. It is preferred to use a slightly Heart more heavy. Yes. You don't want to be using your plastic, plastic water one. bottles. Okay. <laughs> what you want is like a proper sturdy metal one. Uh, ouch, that hurts. <laughs> um, but but that at least means that you can it will hold your weight. Correct. Okay, cool. Yes. So why don't you take us through a couple of things that we can do to help relieve our body, especially because we're sat at home a lot, yes. we're not moving as much. And yes. like you said, if we're not moving, we're not releasing that fascia. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and even if you're actually moving a lot uh, and your muscles actually get tight, you can actually um, do some of these exercises to release mm -hmm. um, the the body uh, but what we're going to go through today is uh, a little bit more through aches, common aches and um, 
parts of the body that gets achy. So okay. lower back, mm -hmm. a bit of the neck, especially if you're at the desk all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're going to actually get that. that turtle neck. Yeah. Right. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> okay. okay. So I'm going to show you basically from the bottom up, basic, uh, and that's going to be on the bum. Okay. All right. So this is going to be here. I'm going to place it right on the ground. I shall okay. come join you down here. All right. Yep. I'm going to actually find a corner. Basically, you can actually roll out your bum. Okay. Yes. And just go up and down. And if you find that there are actually tight spots in the body, mainly usually at the corner. Yep. Oh, All right. yeah, that's my yeah. back one. Uh. You can place your foot Ooh. up and then you can rotate. And you can rock spend side to time. Side. Yeah, uh, this, I found a spot actually. So, so basically, it. if it hurts, you kind of need to stay there a little <laughs> bit yes. longer. Yeah. Okay. So you want um, you can stay up to about two minutes, one wow. two minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, don't stay too long, basically. Okay. Yeah. So you can cover um, every part of the body 360. Okay. So this releases actually um, the glutes area, and releasing the glute actually can also release the back. And for those people that don't know what a glute is, it's basically your bum 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 muscles. Um, then we're gonna go up towards the upper back. Basically, yep. so this you what you can actually find is the well for us it's easy the bra line. Uh, you can place the formula right there, yep. and then from there place your hands behind, mm -hmm. lift up and roll up and down. If you get to do this, it's very very shock. Okay. So if you were watching last week, we had Steph Bovis, we had Sarah Lynn, all showing us like chest openers where you basically interlock your arms behind your back and you're pulling it open, and that helps sort of like with the expansion of the chest but then also the other way pulling it forward and that's when you get that expansion of the back yes so this is like using an additional aid to help you get that same sort of release right exactly and you can actually do so our body can do so many things right so mm -hmm. i'm sure uh through the movements that we were taught uh, last week you can rotate and go onto one side Ooh, that looks and good. then you can go up and down a little bit of flexion. Yes, an extension basically of the mm -hmm. spine and all that. So this will be very, very nice for the upper back, but also through the neck. But the other area that you can go up to is the neck itself. So we're going to lie down. Okay. And maybe this time around, I, I can actually use the, okay. the bottle. We'll sub it out. Yeah. Hopefully you can see that. All right. You're going to find basically um, a spot right under the skull. Right. So if your skull is just sort of there, you find the point at which your your the skull actually ends in the next <laughs> start, right? Just there. Okay. Okay. And then from there, you can actually just turn your head side to side. Hmm. What you can do is, if you find a spot, like there's one here for mine, is you play with your eyes. Oh. So just... And that's breathe. interesting because the nerves and the muscles controlling your eyes are actually mm -hmm. all connected and it all Choose goes straight neck. down yeah. into your skull, down your neck. So there's so many things that are in interconnected. And when mm -hmm. we're straining and looking at our computer screens or if we're looking at our phones a lot or if we're just Netflix and chilling all the time, mm -hmm. like there's a lot of weight and tension. strain and tension that goes into it. Yeah. So this is great. I might gonna You're stay just going to stay there? Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll leave Wani to <laughs> continue stretching out her neck and relaxing there. Thank you so much for joining us this Thank morning. Thank you, Kelly. And I'm sure we're going to get you back because that's a lot of fun. Uh, hopefully, we've started you off on the right foot this morning. We're going to go for a short break, but when we return, we keep you covered with how to occupy your kids in this digital age. Don't go away.
and good morning. Welcome back to Mindful Mondays on The Morning Show. Now that we've worked out the kinks on the foam roller, it's time to make sure the kids aren't glued to the telly for the whole week. Now let's be honest, in this day and age, prying the kids away from devices is no easy feat. And whilst we may be working from home, the work still has to get done. So mums and dads, I feel you, I completely understand, but we can actually take charge of what they actually are watching. So instead mm. of just letting them watch whatever, we can exercise some control over that. And I do think it is a little bit more difficult when the kids are under the age of eight because you kind of need that constant supervision um, on the educational stuff, you know, even with the learning resources and stuff, you have to be there. But you still need to get your work done. Mm -hmm. Whereas if they're a little bit older, then they, they can kind of listen to instructions and take charge of that learning. Be like, do English homework for an hour, and then they do it. But you can't really do that with the young kids. <laughs> no, that is absolutely right. I mean, yeah. at the moment, there's still a lot of guidance going on with the younger ones. So what we decided to do was a little bit of research, and this is obviously tried and tested from my point of view, um, and we've compiled two apps for mm. you to try to implement to assist the home-based learning at home. Now, I say home-based learning for the younger kids simply because when they get older, they've got the assistance of the teachers. But if yeah. they're in nursery, if they're in kindergarten, uh, it's a little bit harder and you don't have those options. Now, we also know that there is a chance that you could download an app and it says, yes, we have in-app purchases, and then you get maybe two bits for free and then everything else you have to pay for, which is yeah. really annoying. It's annoying because like, you're already paying for school and stuff like that. And then we need to pay for other things. But yeah. it is completely understandable because there are some really good resources out there. There are some really, really bad apps out there as well. Um, we should compile a list of apps that you just don't want to get. Yeah. Um, don't bother. But, but I have come across two different apps, one paid and one free, uh, so that we can kind of settle everybody. So the first one I'm going to talk about is called Endless Alphabet. This one is paid. If you get the full suite, it will cost you about $90. Um, they have alphabets, they have numbers, they have learning, basic reading, but it's very, very interactive in the sense that it goes through and it will teach you the phonetics of each of these letters, oh. and it does it in a way such that you can actually step away and leave them to the learning. Yeah. It's very, very directive, and you go through, and it, it kind of guides your child through it instead of just expecting your child to do it for themselves. Mm. So it's smart in a sense, but like I said, it is a little bit pricey. To get the full suite of the apps, close to $90. One of my friends, however, did point out, hello, Xiao, good morning. Uh, she did point out that if you do purchase it, it is less than you would pay for a meal out. It is essentially a family of four going to the cinema. Uh, so I guess it depends what you would rather spend on. But what I can say is that if you are going to be spending the next month at home, then this is a good way to make sure that they're getting the learning in in a yeah. fun and interactive manner. Okay. The second app is by, see, it's, it's so cute. Like the graphics are all really cute. Uh, the second app is completely free. It's by Khan Academy and Khan Academy based out of the States, mm -hmm. uh, but they have a lot of resources for young kids as well as older kids for free, which is super cool. But the Khan Academy Kids is a little bit similar to Endless Alphabet in that they use a very cartoony way of going across it. Uh, but it's very, very interactive. You get a few more elements which you can pick and choose. Okay, it so goes you've got through, emotions. You've got emotions in there as That's well, good. which I really enjoy because yeah. especially with a three-year-old at this point in time, she's throwing tantrums. She's unable to control those emotions, but actually visually seeing what the emotions look like, hearing mm. what they sound like as well, and being able to put a name to it yeah. helps her identify a little better. Because sometimes the learning is not just about your ABCs, your phonetics, and your numeracy. It's There's also about learning it. how to manage yourself. Yeah. And, and that's and why preschool education aware. is so impo important. Yeah, absolutely. So different things, differences, emotions, all these sorts of interactive things. And like I said, this one is absolutely free. No in-app purchases, no ads, and that's what they fully believe in. I think you can make donations, but if you don't have the means to, then it is completely okay. So we've got Khan Kids. Yes. And Endless Alphabet. Endless alphabets, two things to help you navigate life just a little bit more systematically. Mm -hmm. um, I'd like to give a shout out to Jenny Lim as well as Joshua Kim. Thanks for commenting. Good morning to you guys. I hope we're going to start your week off nicely. A gentle reminder, we've got Sport the Difference with yes. two $50 vouchers from the masses to be given away. 
all you need to do is make sure that you comment and also share our video. Um, and we want to hear from you guys. If you've got any questions um, for any of our guests at any point in time, feel free to just drop in a comment and, and we're more than happy to address these on the spot. That is right. We're going to go for a short break, but when we return, we've got CEO of Novena Global Life Care to help us navigate the differences between a mask that actually works and one that's just for fashion. If you've got any questions, drop us a note in the comments. We will be right back. Don't go away. This is The Morning Show with Kelly and Barbara. It's Mindful Monday, and we figured that with everything going on regarding face masks and all the compulsory measures in place, who better to bring in than the experts? That's right. So we showed you how to avoid getting fined with a no-sew mask with your spare fabric at home. But just how effective are these, like, fashionable masks that are being churned out by retailers. Mm, joining us today is Terence Lowe, CEO of Nufina Global Life Care. Terence, thanks for joining us to shed a little bit of light on this whole mask situation. Uh, maybe before we go into the masks though, tell us a little bit about what Novena does and, and how you're so well placed to come and chat with us today. Thank you ladies for inviting me. Um, so Novena Global is uh, an integrated healthcare player uh, we have a regional presence. Uh, we're probably one of the largest in Asia. So we have clinics, um, specialty clinics uh, that covers dentistry, aesthetics, and other, other practices. We have hospitals. We are one of the largest players of um, health screening wow. in, in, in Taiwan. And we also operate day surgery centers. Um, so so um, in the, for, 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 for the longest time, we've been supplying um, PPE and medical supplies to um, internally. But I guess um, since um, the pandemic started, um, over the last couple of months, we have been providing it to local governments, to foreign governments, nonprofit organizations. Um, in fact, we were one of the first companies to actually step out, uh, one of the first foreign companies to step up and actually donated one million masks to, uh, and medical supplies to um, the fight of, against the virus in Wuhan. Wow, yeah. that's incredible. So con congratulations. I think it's great that organizations such as yourself are doing your part to contribute back to the society because obviously with everyone scrambling for masks yeah. there was I mean that was a hot ticket item for quite a while I mean yeah. it still is um, so but, yeah let's let's talk a little bit about mask integrity I, yes. I have the strongest feeling that the DIY, DIY mask that I made last week uh, probably 
wasn't effective in protecting me in any form, shape, or manner, although it would have avoided me from mm -hmm. getting a fine. Mm -hmm. um, so, so what are some of the things that we should be looking out for? Uh, what works, what doesn't work? I think there's just this whole big umbrella mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that everyone's just kind of fallen into when it comes to masks. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think first and foremost, uh, we must be mindful that we are wearing masks not because it's required by law. I think it's about being a social, uh, responsible uh, citizen um, and to prevent the spread of the virus. Um, when it comes to masks, I think you can break it down to three categories, uh, broad categories. Um, I guess the first type of which would be um, your regular face mask, mm -hmm. and that could be single use or um, reusable. Okay. And the, the thing about reusable masks is that it's actually effective. And it prevents um, any kind of droplets or any kind of anything that we expel from contaminate, uh, contaminating uh, the environment. So, so, so um, as long as we practice enough social distancing, right, it is actually um, useful. I think um, that's incredibly important mm -hmm. because we don't know we have it for at least 14 days. Right? Exactly. Because the mm -hmm. symptoms don't show. Exactly. Okay. Okay. Enough. So another kind of mask, I think what is popularly known as is the respir respiratory mask, mm -hmm. the N95s that we always hear of. That's, that's supposed to be great, <laughs> That was a right? hot topic. Okay, so, so okay, I have to dispel some myths here. So and, um, a lot of people might not be aware, but N95s, there are surgical ones and there are non-surgical ones. The non-surgical ones are actually not medical grade. Oh, okay. And um, the non-surgical ones are actually, um, they may be good, in, 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 in um, filtering uh, particles bigger than 0.3 microns. However, right, they're not fluid resistant, i.e. any kind of aerosols or any kind of liquids that, that is splashed on you, yeah. right, it may not be that effective. So it would be good if I was cleaning out the garage and it was filled with dust. Not but so good. if someone sneezes in my face, it's not going to do much. So <laughs> again, that's why social distancing. Um, then when it comes to respiratory masks, a lot of people also talk about, oh, the N99s, the N100s. The N6028s. Oh. <laughs> exactly. P20, and then there is the P, there's the P's, the R's, right? But the idea is that a lot of these are actually for industrial use. Mm. So, okay. so not, necessar not, not, not necessarily uh, medical. So I think we just need to be very mindful because um, if you go beyond 95, the breathability is going to be um, quite, 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 you know, quite challenging. And I guess a lot of people were mentioning that sort of that same element of breathability when mm -hmm. you're in airplanes, right? Yes. When when you're not breathing as you normally would. So it's That's not right. so much the air is recycled because it is filtered, but it's mm -hmm. just that if you're wearing a mask in a plane, then you're actually redu reducing your immune system because you're not able to breathe properly. So same thing with the immunity. Similar. So um, of of course, and the third category, um, I think something that's more popular would be your regular your your, your surgical mask. Mm. Um, these are actually medical grade. So if you look at a surgical mask, you will notice that it's actually three ply. Mm -hmm. um, there is a medical um, material that actually goes into it. In short, it's called SMS, um, spun bound, melt blown, spun bound. But all you have to remember is that in this, 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 in the integrity of it um, is that A, it's anti-static. Why is um, that important? Well. You don't want to get static too, right? Okay. <laughs> yeah, don't, 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 don't get like, like shock on my right? face. Yeah, that, that's a good point. Uh, right. Yeah. Um, and, 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 and of course, it's flame retardant. Um, mm. so also, if we set it on fire. Right. If we set it on fire, <laughs> you notice you notice that the way it burns is very different. Okay. And uh, there will be some kind of uh, a residue, right, if you burn it. Um, and and, and, and it, 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 it could tell you that that is where um, the effectiveness comes in from. I'll Loki, go into that. Like, Try this when I get home. Just please. Actually, fire. actually, that would be a very good way to test your mask. <laughs> However, I just like to point out we are not encouraging you to start like burning, <laughs> burning your masks. masks. Yeah. So another limited thing, commodity here. Yes. Another thing about it is um, it this this thing is um in, is, is 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 thermal woven, mm -hmm. and most importantly, if you look at the middle layer, it's a there's a microfiber filter. Okay. And, and, and so this is why, you know, you have the three layers and they have this white, blue, white kind of thing. So which side do we put out? Because ah, there was that okay. whole mm, thing that, that yeah, was I wanted to okay. online. Okay. It's just like, oh, you wear it on the blue side out if you're <laughs> infected or the white side out if yeah. you're not infected. Yeah. yeah. So uh, typically uh, the white actually goes in there. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I, want to, I want to spend some time to talk about, I want to spend some time to talk about um, the materials and the features, yep. which is why... Um, if you look at a mask, you know, it's because of the integrity as a medical a material, um, there's tensile strength 
right? Mm -hmm. But lightweight at the same time, there's breathability. Mm -hmm. And most importantly, when you look at a surgical mask, it talks about the filtration rate, whether it's the bacterial filtration or the particle filtration. A typical one is above 80%, but say the ones that we sell here is about over 98%. Oh, wow. So, so the most important thing, again, when I was talking about the N95s earlier, the non-surgical ones are not fluid resistant, while a good surgical mask is fluid resistance and I think uh, this is the key okay right this is key right here so again it prevents um, any kind of um, 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 moisture from 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 going out and at the same time from the external environment from contaminating yourself and what about the longevity of it like the lifespan of these yes um, depending on how you wear it um, the typical recommendation has been three to eight hours mm -hmm. yeah okay but once it's damp it's time to replace it Okay, so I have seen as well a lot of people online making their own yes. sort of inserts, mm -hmm. sort of, sort of well, covers. Covers, covers for it, so that you can insert your mask to which would extend the life of mm -hmm. your mask. Is that true? Um, well, how, how, about, how about we put it this way? If we make a, re a reusable mask, mm -hmm. right, ideally it has, it has to have several layers. But I think more importantly is that you always keep it washed you keep it you know, and have it dry clean properly. Yeah. Yeah. And the whole idea that you know, the layers do, do um, 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 help you to, to say prevent um, uh, moisture from going out. However, however, right, always maintain social distancing. Yes, mm. yeah. I think that is key. So, so Joshua uh, commented on our video on Facebook and he's asking, so he has a fabric mask mm -hmm. at home, which I'm, I'm sure he's just bought from like NTUC. Like everyone's got mm -hmm. a fabric mask mm -hmm. nowadays. I've got a 3M fabric yes, mask. Yes, yes, yes. How, how effective uh, are those? As I, as I pointed out earlier, uh, I think fa fabric masks are effective as well. I think we are all doing whatever we can mm -hmm. to contain the virus. Mm -hmm. And the whole idea of having a mask is so that we prevent co further contamination. Correct. And so as long as I'll keep, we keep our social distancing, it is okay. And I do have um, um, reusable masks as well that I always keep in my car. Okay, yeah. that's, okay. A, that's so a very just good for yeah. emergencies, I mean, in order to extend the longevity of it, you want to make sure that you wash them if they're reusable yes, all the time. Make sure wash they're not damp. Every day, yeah. Um, keep, keep them dry. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the beauty of living in Singapore. It is possible that before you sleep at night, you get it washed, hang it out to dry. And, and the next day, it's almost 70, 80% um, yeah. dry already. Get a hair dryer. I was just going to say the quick hair dryer. Precisely, or, or precisely, dry precisely. Yeah. Awesome. Now, I do know that you've got some great videos to showcase the yes. types of masks mm -hmm. and also how to wear a mask properly. So mm -hmm. if you'd like to, you can always check out your social media channels yes, as please. well. Uh, we've, we've had some wonderful videos that you guys have created just to show you uh, a little bit more about how to wear a mask properly and also the types of masks available which is very cool one thing uh, when you buy a mask uh, there are certain things to take note of make sure when you buy a mask look at the box and identify the manufacturer ideally ideally there's some kind of accreditation whether it's ce fda look at the bacterial and um, the, the the particle uh, efficiency filtering efficiency that is very important make sure it's fluid resistance mm -hmm. And please don't go to any dubious sites <laughs> to buy your masks. <laughs> okay, so yeah. where can we purchase masks if we, if we like what we see? Um, you can come to uh, Novena Life Care on okay. Instagram for more information or Fantastic. any of our websites. Thank, thank you. you so much thank for shedding so much. light. I think hopefully we've all cleared the air on the mask situation. Maybe yeah. we'll share those videos as well because I think it is important that people understand and know a little bit more. So if you need to know any more, check out Novena Global Life Care. Obviously, we can't stress enough that, that staying at home is absolutely crucial yeah. at this point in time. You know, if you don't have to go out, don't. Mm -hmm. Yes. And never mind, you can always stay in and spend an hour with us every single day. Thank you very much, Terence. Thank you very Appreciate much, Appreciate the chat. Thank you. Uh, we are going to be right back. That's right. Coming up a little bit, um, we've got, you know how you've always got that lone sock because the washing machine will only ever consume one of them? Mm -hmm. We're going to show you how you can put those to good use. <laughs>
Welcome back and thank you for joining us here on The Morning Show. Now, earlier on, we had Terence Lowe with us from Novena Global, Global Life. Okay. Life. Um, and Joshua also had another comment and question um, based on that chat. So the government issued masks. Yes. Um, how long can they last us? So we talked about the industrial ones. Uh, sorry, the, the surgical medical mask, grade. The medical surgical, surgical mask, which lasts between, we'll get that right, uh, between three to eight hours. But yeah. essentially, the advice is when it becomes damp, yeah, that's when you need to be replacing them, which is why you can extend the life of your disposable mask by putting a cover on it. But obviously, then that reduces the breathability. Yes. Um, so I think it really depends on the kind of mask that you have at home. Mm -hmm. You want to make sure that the one that you're using is the most efficient for you. Obviously, if you're not leaving the house that often, you're, you're kind of OK. And then you can maybe reuse it a little bit more with the cover. Yep. Uh, make sure you're washing the cover and stuff like that. Again, if you've got any questions, um, Kelly and I will try our best yeah. to answer them now that the expert is no longer in the house. <laughs> We will do our best, guys. We will do our best um, because we are no experts in a lot of things. And As we're you would have seen so far. Yeah, with our DIY segment. So we're here to break it down for you uh, because like Barbara said, the washing machine always eats one sock. I know. It's, um, and we've been spending a lot of time nowadays, obviously, now that we're home, sorting things, fixing things, building things, Marie Kondoing our lives. Um, and you, I was doing a big clear out the other week and there were so many single socks, which I now don't have, but we wanted to demo how you can put these good socks to use. Okay, so okay? what are we gonna do first? So part number one, which requires no demonstration, ladies, I know y'all feel me, when you've got those new pair of heels that you need to break into, but you just know on a night out, it's gonna give you the worst blisters of your life. So what you can do now that you're at home all the mm -hmm. time, Put on a pair of socks and just wear your heels. It breaks into them um, and it wears them down a little bit so that you don't end up having blisters when the circuit breaker is over and we are Actually going out a little bit out. wearing heels. <laughs> um, so now's the perfect time because you you don't have to go out in order to break into them. Fair enough, that's a good tip. Okay, what's the next one? Useful tip number two. All right, so we want the lone sock. Donna has very kindly given us these two socks that she doesn't use at all. Um, so nice. I know. They're super cute. I can't open the scissors. Okay. Oh, there you go. Um, so what you want to do, so a lot of the time we go out uh, running and jogging and stuff like that because mm -hmm. we still want to get that exercise in. Um, but given that everything is sold out nowadays, um, not all of us have an armband to put our phone. Or ladies, I feel y'all, we don't necessarily have, uh, what do you call it, pockets in all of our shorts and tights. I'm just going to derobe a little bit here. Oh my goodness me, put Ooh, it away. Skin. So now that you've got a little bit of a, a hole in the bottom of your sock, probably should have cut a bit more of that off. What you want to do is, you I look feel like, like you one look of those aunties, aunties who doesn't that want goes to drive. driving. <laughs> so you want to do this, right? So you've got an, a sexy little elbow sock going well, on. Well, why don't you just put the, the yeah. heel bit okay. on your elbow? There you go. Ah, my biceps are too big. Okay, so then you're going to roll up that bottom half and make sure it's not too tight. So grab your dad's sock or <laughs> something. Yeah. And then you're going to whip out a handy dandy phone. And ideally, you want to help me with this? Oh, yeah, not sure. uh, an iPhone XS Plus because it's huge. Unless you use bigger socks. Unless you use a bigger sock. And you can roll it up. And it's got quite a firm hold, I'm not going to lie. Ta-da! I can wear it to go running. Now, if you happen to have like that leftover <laughs> piece of sock, I'm just, I just, I just thought of this, guys. Uh, literally, what you can do is you can cut off the toes, and then this is going to be really gross, Don's. I'm going to take your sock. Then your sock, don't worry. And then you take it, and if you don't have a sweatband, oh, ta-da! <laughs> okay, that's amazing. All right, that's awesome. So Moving many things on. you can do with a random sock. Last one, and the kids are going to absolutely love you for this. You want to take uh, a water bottle. You want to cut off the bottom so that it's empty. empty. Uh, that was the word I was looking for. Take your sock. You can just beat that a little bit. Okay. So we've got a bowl filled with soap and water, so soapy water. And I'm just going to... Smells good, right? So you want to... What soap did you use? Just the Washing one that I could good. find outside. So you want to, and again, as is always with most of our 
<laughs> DIYs. We haven't actually tried this at home. Um, so it may or may not work. So you've got your water bottle with your sock. And apparently, <laughs> what if you this can do. Work, this is going to be really funny. Yeah, what you can do is you can make bubbles for the kids. So. I really don't think this is going to work. It worked in the tutorial video. <laughs> okay. As you can see, we're doing a lot of research. Oh, that's a lot of water. Yeah, I was going to say, you really don't want to so be. Apparently, I'm just going to get some bubbles in there for good measure. Oh, it's foaming up. Ta da! <laughs> so, the, so, I don't think because, that was the desired effect. No, 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 that was the desired effect. Oh, right, okay. Obviously, if you have like bubble solution at home, it works better because then you get more like bubbly bubbles. But soap works absolutely fine and it keeps the kids occupied for quite a while just to, you know, make like little bubble snakes or, you know, if they want to make bubbles in the bubble bath and you really want to milk the bubbles in bubble baths. And you can also encourage them to wash their hands because this is like an instant foaming <laughs> soap. Yay! So to encourage the kids to see so, see you so. know, then, then you make foamy, foamy bubbles. Wow. Okay, while well, Kelly has a little bit too much fun with that, uh, we're going to go for a short break. And when we come back, everyone, I hope you've WhatsApped in with your answers and Written shared on the video Facebook. on Facebook. Make sure it's on the Get Active SG Facebook page yep. as well. We're going to have, we're going to look into my lunchbox today. Ooh. Um, <laughs> Are you hungry? Still no vegetables, uh, but we will be right back. Welcome back to The Morning Show with me, Barbara, and my lovely older sister, Kelly. Except you're the one that's being called an auntie on Facebook. We are loving the banter that you guys are coming up with. Thanks, and apparently, uh, pretty <laughs> Auntie Barbara is looking great today. Cut her hair, I thought she looked 15, but apparently Josh thinks she looks like an auntie. Maybe it's the whole comfy get up thing. Yeah, well, this is very comfortable. Thank you, Ava, for this birthday present. I love it. Anyway, <laughs> we did mention earlier on that we've got our giveaway. Um, and each week, we'll be doing a couple of giveaways each week. Today, we're giving away 
two $50 vouchers to the masses. Now we have mentioned that this is like one of my ultimate favorite places to go. Yeah. Um, they've got things like a DIY ramen kit. So they provide you with everything that you need, including uh, some shells in there, some amazing chashu. Uh, the broth is to die for. Mm -hmm. uh, and you basically just cook up your ramen, throw it all in together. And like that, look, look, what? look at that ramen. It comes with an onsen egg as well. Um, and then of course, some of their signature dishes like their CCCC pasta, yep. um, that is amazing. So it's They've, like a chorizo, uh, clam, clam, crab, every, everything caviar, you want, caviar yep. pasta. It, what they also just announced yesterday was their new addition to the delivery menu, mm -hmm. which is the, oh, what's it called again? Lu Rou Fan. Lu Rou Fan, the, the Taiwanese. It, the Taiwanese pork like, dish, mince pork mince dish. Mince pork dish, which I am very excited about ordering mm -hmm. this week. Yeah. Now, <laughs> now, now, just going back to Facebook, because you guys have been keeping up the conversation, we really like hearing from you. Uh, we had a few more questions about the mask. So we thought we would show you the video from Novena Global Life Care mm -hmm. uh, to demonstrate the different types of masks and how effective they are, just to make sure that we clear the air on all the types of masks that were available, because we did talk about a few different sorts. Yeah. And we want you guys to make sure that you're making the right choice. If you are spending money and buying a mask, let's take a quick look at the best types of masks to go and get. Now in Singapore, you are required to wear a mask if you need to leave the house. This is due to increased local transmission in Singapore and the possibility of some undetected cases in the community. There is also some evidence that infected people showing no symptoms may infect others. Wearing a mask may help to protect others in case you have the virus but don't know it. A mask may help you keep your droplets to yourself when you sneeze or speak or cough. Let's take a look at a few different mask types, the N95 mask, medical surgical mask, and cloth or DIY masks. N95 masks, while offering the best protection, require proper fitting, are uncomfortable for long periods, and are prioritized for medical staff during this worldwide shortage. Novena Global Life Care's high quality, medical grade surgical masks are just as effective when worn properly, and one of the few brands in the world to carry both CE and US FDA certifications. Reusable cloth or DIY designs are uncertified or varying quality and are not guaranteed protection. Novena Global Life Care's masks are constructed with SMS technology to create a multi-layered material with high tensile strength, breathability and comfort. The result is water repellent and serves as a barrier against droplets, bacteria and liquids, as well as gas and steam perspiration. Our masks are medical grade with both CE and US FDA certification. To order masks from Novena Global Life Care, you can find the details on our social media. Fantastic. Hopefully that's helped to clear the air a little bit. Like Terence mentioned, though, something is better than nothing. And right, right at the beginning of the video, it did highlight that if you don't know that you have mm -hmm. coronavirus, um, then you, I mean, you're not going to be displaying symptoms. So yeah. by limiting that transmission, even if it's just by wearing a reusable or cloth mask or a DIY mask, that something is definitely better than nothing. We are seeing our case numbers go down. We approach mm -hmm. the two week mark tomorrow uh, of right. Circuit Breaker. And I think it is showing that it is effective. We're seeing our community cases dropping. We only had like 25 cases. So I think it really goes to show that by staying at home, implementing safe distancing, and ensuring that we're all wearing our masks when we're going out, it really is helping lots. And if you do get bored, just join us at 10 o'clock every morning. Exactly. Uh, speaking of, we are nearly at lunchtime and I brought my lunchbox today. Mm -hmm. I did cook, it wasn't leftovers. Oh, well um, done. I know. You actually cooked it and someone didn't cook it for you? I cooked it. Oh, look at you go. So, Everybody's a domestic goddess now. Well, you are when you're only using five ingredients. Okay. Um, so, yes, obviously I am not the most magical person when it comes to being in the kitchen. Um, so quick and easy meals are a good go-to. The five ingredients are garlic, onions, <laughs> cherry tomatoes, canned sardines, Whatever and works. soba noodles. Mm. Okay, so obviously canned sardines are not always uh, your best option. When it comes to having a meal, you want to kind of not always have canned stuff. But if you're looking for something quick, easy, it literally takes 15 minutes. Um, that It helps that the soba noodles were leftovers, they were pre-cooked. Mm -hmm. So it's just a matter of tossing them into the pan. So 
literally in that order of garlic, onions, tomatoes, sardines, and soba noodles. That's the order that you toss everything into the pan, um, just to kind of heat it all up, give it a nice bit of uh, flavor coming out of it. Um, you can't see much. And I've realized that the thing about my cooking is that if it doesn't look great, it tastes fantastic. But if I've got presentation down to a tea, there's a 90% chance that it really does doesn't not taste, taste very good, good at all. Now, talking about the soba in there, soba is a great thing for you to add to your diet, especially if you want some noodles, uh, but you don't want to be whacking up the gluten in your body because soba is actually made from buckwheat. Now, it's a pseudo cereal, which mm -hmm. means that it is not a true cereal grain, right, Barbara? Yeah. So a lot of the pastas and, and stuff that we have, they all come from uh, wheat, um, non-grasses. It's, yeah, so they, they're used in very, very similar ways. Um, so you can sub out for your, you know, your bolognese, all your pasta dishes. Mm -hmm. um, soba noodles have a nice kind of like slightly tougher texture, which yeah. I quite like. It's a good bite. It's very high in protein and also supports cardiovascular health, which helps to lower your cholesterol, manage right. your blood pressure. Plus it's gluten free and low in fat. Yeah. So if you need a quick and easy meal, feel free to hit me up and I can send you the order in which I put five ingredients together. I'm not going to lie, I did throw a little bit of sesame oil in there just to be like, wow, oh, fancy. fancy. And you can squeeze a little bit of lemon or lime mm -hmm. just to take away the fishiness if you're not the biggest fan of it. Okay. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, there you go. Super simple, super easy. And if she can make it, so can you uh, to lend on Martinians. Wow. Thanks. Fabulous tagline. Alrighty, <laughs> it's time for us to take a pause on the day. You've got an entire afternoon ahead of you. So we decided to sit down now with Janice from Yoga Movement to take part in our mindful moment. All right, hello. Today's um, breathing technique, we're going to be doing Ujjayi breath, which translates to uh, victorious breath, or some people call it ocean, ocean's breath, okay? Uh, most of the time, we do Ujjayi breath when we are practicing yoga uh, because it helps to heat up the body a little quicker, and also the sound of the breath helps us to focus on the practice and to remember to breathe deeply uh, throughout the practice, okay? Uh, so how we're going to do this is uh, we're just going to get ourselves familiar with uh, breathing uh, with the back of the throat. <laughs> so imagine if you were trying to fog up a glass in front of you with your mouth open, you would be blowing out the air like this. <sighs> Correct? So with that same sensation, you want to do the same thing but with the mouth closed, okay? So closing your mouth, think about constricting the back of the throat. When you inhale, you're going to rub the air against the back of the throat, feeling that gentle friction. And then when you exhale, same thing, through the nose. This is the sound you will create. It sounds like the ocean waves and it's really going to calm your body down. We're going to try that one more time, okay? So constrict your throat, rub the air against the back of the throat with the gentle friction. Great. So that's the idea, but when you're doing this breath, you can always come into any comfortable seated position before your practice uh, to get yourself acquainted with that breath. Uh, you want to make sure that you're sitting up tall, your shoulders are relaxed, and we're just going to close the eyes. We're going to practice that a couple of rounds, okay? Make sure you're stacking your head and your shoulders above your hips. Good. Then with the mouth closed, we're going to inhale Ujjayi breath. And out. In and out. Continue on your own. When you're doing so, you want to feel the expansion of your ribs in all directions, in your belly, when you inhale. And when you're exhaling, you want to pull the lower belly in and feel the chest fall. Slightly engage your pelvic floor here, the muscle at your groin. If you find that you're using a lot of force to do this, you want to slowly start to smoothen the breath. Good. Just two more times. Inhale. Exhale. 
last time in and up. Great. You can gently blink open your eyes. You can choose to continue at your own pace. Um, well, that's it for Ujjayi breathing, victorious breath. Thank you. Thank you, Janice. I'm definitely feeling a lot more centered and focused for the week ahead. I like that Ujjayi breath. Don't forget, we've also got our ripped rangers, Kenneth and Yaoxiang, coming in at 3 p.m. to take you through that mid-afternoon bodyweight workout. And you can also, every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, catch legend John Yong and freshly promoted daddy Duncan Elias on the evening show at 9 p.m. That's right. We'll be back again tomorrow at 10 a.m. for hashtag Trending Tuesdays. Tuesdays. Joined by TikTok superstar Ming and ballet body, ballet body <laughs> founder <laughs> Alison Carroll. We'll take us through some stretches to awaken our inner black swan. Did you ever do ballet? For like half a lesson and then I quit. Anyway, <laughs> hopefully we'll test those skills. We'll join you again tomorrow. Stay tuned to Get Active TV for everything. But remember, in the meantime, stay safe, stay strong, and stay, stay at, at home. home.